Hi, remember me? Yep, Dr. Prabjot. It's been a while since I've done a video, but this is one that you might find quite useful. The question today is, how do you diagnose H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori? Yes, some of you may have heard about it, some have never heard about this, but it is an irritating one for sure. It's like this, it's a bacteria that gets into your GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, via the oral route, through contaminated food or water, and it does a mess for you. For example, it causes things like bloating, gastritis, heartburn, reflux, sometimes ulcers, and the worst thing of all, it's associated with gastric cancer. So, it's not something you want. It's something that you need to get rid of. But how do you know you have it? Today's question is, what's the best way to test for H. pylori? So we're gonna go through a few tests for H. pylori. We're gonna rank it from the worst to the best. So in last place is the blood test, the H. pylori antibody test. It's a good test to say whether you've got H. pylori. The problem with it is that when it registers positive, it doesn't become negative again. Meaning that we don't know if you've got this H. pylori now, Yesterday, a year ago, you had eradication, it just stays positive. Simple test, simple blood test, but it has its limitations. Second from last is the stool antigen test. Yes, stool means poo. So you gotta take a sample of your poo and we test it for the bug. And you have it, you have it. Then you know what you need to do. But I don't know many people who like to take samples of the poo. The next best test is the urea breath test or the UBT. What it is, you come into the hospital one day, fasted for about four hours, we give you this little drink to drink, tastes like lemonade, drink it down and then you breathe out into this machine. And this machine will then tell you whether you got H. pylori, yes or no. It's fantastic. And also, very importantly, this test is used to confirm that your treatment for H. pylori is in fact effective. And now comes the best test. Well, unfortunately it's invasive, so it requires endoscopy going on this way. Now what is the point of this? All the rest were stool samples, blood tests, etc. Going down into your stomach, you get to take the actual samples. You get to test whether you have H. pylori for sure. But there is one fantastic added benefit. We'll come to that benefit at the very end. So what happens if you just leave the H. pylori alone? Well, as before, you might get some gastritis, you might get bloating, reflux, heartburn, ulcers, and these ulcers can sometimes bleed very badly. But it's the link to gastric cancers that is the most worrying of all. So coming back to why do you need endoscopy? Well, it's quite simple. If you've got a diagnosis of H. pylori, you do not know how long you've had it for. Following that, you do not know if any damage has been done. Meaning, are you at increased risk of gastric cancer? So, the best test would be endoscopy because you get to pick up on the H. pylori, but you also get to test and see if your risk of gastric cancer has gone up because of this bacteria. No, I'm not promoting one test over the other, but it's important you understand the advantages of the, and the limitations of each test. Bonus point. When you have H. pylori, you have gastritis, etc. But very often, when you have the H. pylori treated, surprisingly enough, your reflux symptoms can get worse. Now, you probably then say, why bother treat the H. pylori in the first place? Well, because of its links to gastric cancer, it's important to have it treated. And if you do get reflux after that, then we treat that. There are many ways of treating that and many new modern ways of which you can see in one of my previous videos. So what now? Well, if you're worried about H. pylori, you think you have it or you know someone that's had it in be sharing food, etc. First thing to do is not to jump the gun. See your gastroenterologist. Talk to us and we will advise accordingly as to which is the best way to approach this. Also, if you're wondering what this picture is there, it's got nothing to do with H. pylori. But bonus point, if you can guess what this is, 